What is going on guys, my name is John and welcome back to yet another video. Although Pokemon Sword and Shield have a relatively short post game, one thing that's been consistent in the games for years is a battle tower style building that you can use once you beat the main story. This generation's battle tower contains a brand new ranking system, but what does it take to get to the top? Today we're going to find out how easily you can get to the max rank in Pokemon Sword and Shield's battle tower. So when you get around to completing the main story of Pokemon Sword and Shield, you're able to revisit the Macros Cosmos building that is now repurposed to the Battle Tower after Rose steps down as the chairman. This facility is pretty much the same concept as the previous Battle Tower formats, but the main attraction of this generation is the ranking system. In essence, it works the same as many of today's competitive games. You start out unranked and progress from bronze to silver, to gold, to platinum, and so on. In these games, the ranks are represented by Pokeballs, with the Master Ball being the highest rank available. Because the Battle Tower has been consistently a relatively difficult thing to complete across every generation, we're going to have to be as prepared as possible to take on every opponent that we face. If you didn't know, all of the Pokemon you face here have diverse movesets, competitive items, and most importantly, max EVs. I believe that this has been included in some shape or form since Generation 2, but that doesn't change the fact that it makes the battles much more difficult than your regular playthrough. In the same fashion of the Battle Frontier video I did a couple months back, I've created a team that is usable in any version of the game. This way you can replicate what I'm doing and take on the challenge yourself. Although there are a lot less Pokemon in this generation, there are still a ton of Pokemon that you can use to get through this, and I've made a team that's pretty easy to throw together. I want to note that I've included a link in the description with a bunch of Pokemon you could use for the Battle Tower, and my choices can be easily replaced with others to make your team the best that it could be. The first Pokemon that we're going to use is Aegislash. Aegislash has been broken the moment that it was available in X and Y, and not much has changed since then. This Pokemon actually did receive a nerf in this game, as its attacking or defending stats have been brought down by 10 depending on which stance it's in. This definitely has an impact on the ranges in competitive, but it won't matter too much for what we're going to use it for. I decided to go for a defensive set that I can swap into to tank hits, but since its stats are really good across the board, it can also deal a lot when I need it to. The EV investments are going to go into HP and Special Defense. Aegislash's speed stat is too low for any speed EVs to give it any sort of advantage, so I think this is one of the better options for the role that it's going to play. Its moveset is King's Shield, Substitute, Sacred Sword, and Shadow Ball. King's Shield is a free stance change and heal from the leftovers that it's holding, and Substitute can take it even further if your opponent doesn't try to quickly take you out. The other two moves are for coverage, but there are quite a few other options you can give Aegislash that will work just as well. The second Pokemon that we're going to take a look at is Zacian. Now your first thought is probably, that's a legendary, there's no way that isn't banned. And I thought the same thing. For some reason in this generation, there isn't a ban list of any sort, which means you can use literally any Pokemon you have in your PC to take them on. Zashi is an extremely powerful Pokemon solely off of its stats, but its move pool is very diverse, albeit relatively limited. I decided to go for a physical sweeper set because of its absurd 170 attack when it's holding the rusted sword, which also gives the steel typing for more stab options. The moves that we're going for is Iron Head, Sacred Sword, Play Rough, and Crunch. Iron Head also turns into Behemoth Blade because of the sword, which increases its power from 80 to 100. This also doubles if the opponent is Dynamaxed. Now this is obviously a version exclusive and limited to quite a lot of people, but you'll understand why you can use pretty much anything after I explain this last Pokemon. Dragovish is a new Pokemon that was introduced in Generation 8, and it's very interesting. This is one of the fossil Pokemon that you can revive on Route 6, and it's literally one of the most broken Pokemon in the entire game so far. Let me explain why. So when you look at its stats, you're probably thinking, okay, nothing too crazy, it's kinda strong, but it definitely doesn't seem like it'd be too much of a threat. So what's the big deal? The first thing is its signature move, Ficious Rend. This stab move has a base power of 85, but if the Pokemon outspeeds, the power of the move is doubled. This is definitely a big threat already, but since it only has a base speed of 75, it shouldn't be too bad, right? Well, if you give it a choice scarf, your speed is increased by 50%, so if you put all your EVs in speed and attack, you can outspeed an overwhelming majority of the Pokemon. That is, unless they're holding a choice scarf themselves. You might also be thinking that the choice scarf limits it quite a lot, because it's locked into one move. But since you can Dynamax in the Battle Tower, you're able to choose whatever move you want. So if you're in a pinch, you can just resort to that and still get the benefits of the Choice Scarf. After all that, even its ability is ridiculous. Strong Jaw increases the power of biting moves by 50%, which means that stuff like Bite, Crunch, and all the Elemental Fangs have a boost. But do you want to take a guess what new move was added to this ability? Ficious Rend. This means that you can not only outspeed just about everything in the Battle Tower, 
but you have access to a physical stab move, boosted 50% by its ability, and doubled in power if it outspeeds the opposing Pokemon. Someone decided this was okay. It's also important to note that Fish's Ren's power doubles even if the Pokemon switches out, so there are very few counters to stop this monster of a Pokemon. If you haven't noticed, my team is lacking in a lot of regards when it comes to type coverage, but that was semi-intentional. I knew far ahead of time that Dracovish had extreme potential, so I wanted to see how much it could possibly carry with a team that wasn't the best it could possibly be. Before we hop into battles, I just want to briefly cover a couple of things. For those who want to take on this challenge, but don't want to go through the grueling process of breeding and EV training for hours on end, I have great news. If you go into the Versus section of the main menu, you can input the code on your screen and rent out the team that I made and use it in the battle tower. This way you can start the challenge right now if you wanted to, and even use it online as well. I'll probably update it to a full team of 6 within the next week or so and throw a new code in the description. But if you don't care about doing the whole team building aspect, you can download this team right now if you have a Nintendo Online membership. I also want to say this generation is definitely the most competitive friendly it's ever been, and it took literally 3 hours total to build this entire team. To briefly explain it best, we're going to use the Aegislash that I put on my team. I spent a bit of time breeding Honedge until I got the exact nature I was looking for, and then gave my Ditto the Destiny Knot to pass down its IVs until I got as close to 31 in all stats as I could possibly get. From here I used some EXP candies to level it up past 50, and went into the move relearner in any of the Pokemon centers to teach it all the moves I wanted it to know. I gave it the leftovers that you can grab in the overworld, and then bought a bunch of vitamins and fed it to Aegislash to max out its EVs. Because there now isn't a cap on using them anymore, you can just buy 26 to get 252 EVs in the stat that you want. This process took me a whopping 40 minutes to do, which is incomparable to any other generation. On another side note, I want to give a quick shout out to Sergeant Smash for giving me a foreign ditto to help with the breeding and potential shinies, and I've linked some of his stuff in the description below that you should check out. Okay, now that we've gone on a wild side tangent, let's see how our team fares against the Battle Tower. The Battle Tower for Sword and Shield contains only two formats single battles, and double battles. These are self-explanatory, and they meet the same standards of only allowing 3 and 4 Pokemon respectively. As I mentioned earlier, you start out unranked and have to work your way up to the Pokeball tier. Unlike the previous installments, you can actually lose battles, but when you do, you drop down in rank, which has a much larger impact the higher you go in the tiers. Because I'm much better at doubles, I'm going to challenge myself a little bit with the singles format. So in the first few battles, I led with Dracovish and went with a very simple plan. If Vicious Ren wasn't effective, Dynamax and use a different move. This worked out really well for the first few battles, but I decided to just stick with Fish's Ren to just see how much damage it really does. And yeah, this was a majority of the battles. Because all the little benefits Dracovish gets can be mixed together, it makes it basically unstoppable in an offline mode like this. Pretty much 90% of the Pokemon I faced I could one shot, and that includes Pokemon that resisted the move as well. The only Pokemon that could truly counter it were Wobbuffet and some Ice types that could tank a hit like Avalog. But other than that, it would take care of basically anything else. The only battles I would consider to be difficult are the final battles you have before you reach the next rank. Leon is the leader of the facility, and he's pretty easy to prepare for when you know that he'll always have his Gigantamax Charizard with him. The only reason this battle is tough is because he's the only trainer that can Dynamax, and that was more of a me problem because Zacian and Aegislash get destroyed by fire moves. These were the only battles that I lost throughout the entire challenge because of how strong Charizard can actually be. But if you start out with Zacian and use Behemoth Blade, you can take care of the first two Pokemon and switch to Dracovish to take care of the rest. I really wish there was more to say about the battles, but this was probably the easiest challenge I've ever done. This Pokemon is that good. Overall it took me 34 wins to reach Master Ball tier, but there is a secret final battle if you keep going within the rank. Eventually you have one final battle with Leon, and this is essentially the last battle you're supposed to do in the entire game. Is it harder than the previous four? No, not really. But if you manage to defeat him, every Pokemon that participated in the battle will get a ribbon commemorating your secret achievement. I also want to note that during this entire process, you're given a bunch of rare candies, nature mints, gold and silver bottle caps, and over 200 battle points once you finish the final battle. Considering that they reduced the price on almost all the battle shop items in this generation, you can basically buy all the remaining competitive items that you can't pick up in the overworld with just these points. After a total of 45 battles, we reached the Master Ball tier and completed all the major battles within the Battle Tower, with pretty much only one Pokemon. But how did I do? So let's review. In total, I was able to clear the entire Battle Tower in about an hour and 45 minutes which is insane when you compare it to literally any other battle facility. 
Because I lost to Leon a couple times, I'm sure you could do this in an hour or even less, which really shows how busted Dracovish really is. I know this is more of a Dracovish PSA video than a challenge video, but if you're struggling with getting through the higher tiers in the battle tower, this is probably the easiest way to get through the entire challenge without putting in too much effort. Once again, if you'd like to use this team, use the code I've linked in the description to download the team and try it out for yourself. It takes less than a minute to set up, and you can keep it for as long as you'd like. Other than that, that's all there is to say about getting to the Master Ball tier in Sword and Shield's Battle Tower. And that's going to do for today's video. If you liked the video, leave a like and consider subscribing as we'll be making more content like this very soon. If you have any other suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, leave a comment below. Follow me on Twitter to keep updated with new videos as they come out. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.